All right, so we're going to um, talk a little bit about the American Revolution or going into the American Revolution. And <clears throat> what the, you know, just to give you an idea here and start off American Revolution. 1775 to 1783. Um, what I want you to know is that the first year of the revolution, 75 to 76, that um, the colonists, the Americans, uh, were fighting mainly for their rights as Englishmen. Not, necess not for independence, but after... 1776, from then on, um, the Americans were fighting for independence. And what we're going to talk about in this lecture were the advantages of the British and advantages of the Americans. Oops. And basically, you know, why the Americans won the war, okay? So, <clears throat> first let's talk about British advantages. Number one. The first... British advantage uh, was their huge navy. They had the best navy in the world. And in war, trust me, the navy uh, plays a huge role. Uh, British possessed uh, the, like I said, not only the best navy in the world, but the largest navy in the world. It was larger than the second and third fleets put together, which uh, France, I think, had the second largest fleet, and Spain had uh, the third. Uh, and so you put uh, those these two together, the British navy was larger than these two combined. The second British advantage was their army. They had a well-trained, equipped, organized army. The third British advantage was that they had a larger population. Counting the people, uh, if you count people in Ireland... Uh, which was at that time a British possession, uh, Great Britain had 11 million people. And in America, I think um, there were 2.5 million. So if it became a war of attrition, then the British would have an advantage in a way. <coughs> you, would, you would think at first glance anyway. I mean, there's more to it than that. And that's what I was going to say at first glance when you see all these things, and I'm going to put some more, you would think that it would be very easy for the British. The fourth um, major advantage was economic power. They already had an economy uh, in place, and uh, they possessed a you know, tremendous amount of um, uh, cash and credit, uh, they, you know, their manufacturing output far exceeded anything that you'd find uh, in America. Uh, so, uh, obviously, that was an advantage. To raise money for the war, the Americans had to, prevent, had to print uh, vast sums of money, which, of course, causes uh, inflation. If you have, if you just start, I used, you know, I used to think that when I was a little kid, you know, I was like, why don't they just, you know, print money, and we can all be millionaires, all right? And, <clears throat> you know, I thought I was some kind of genius and everybody else was stupid, but, of course, if you just print money, it causes inflation. The money's not worth as much. 
So even though we'd be, all be millionaires, you know, houses would cost $5 million. A little teeny tiny house somewhere. Um, a fifth British advantage, uh, and this may actually surprise you a little bit, was unity. Uh, the British, for the most part, not everybody, but the vast majority of Brits supported the war uh, against the Americans. And this is something that's often overlooked. They were more united uh, than America. Uh, although there were some Britons who opposed the war, um, they were a small minority. All right. Americans uh, were much more divided. Uh, John Adams once said that it was, you know, one-third of Americans were patriots, one-third were loyalists, and one-third was neutral. And that wasn't far off the mark, uh, but it does appear that about one-third were, in America, were, you know, for independence and for fighting, uh, were for the war. Uh, one-fourth were loyalists, or these were uh, Tories, a Tory was somebody that was a loyalist. To them, they were being patriotic. Uh, and the rest were just kind of like, you know, d dependent on the situation. Uh, so one-third were, you know, the Americans were fighting, that you know, they were for the war, fighting for independence. They were American patriots. One-quarter were loyalists. And the rest were just kind of just dependent on, you know, who was, uh, which army was, was around, okay? Uh, so uh, that's actually prop, and you, you won't hear that often. I mean, most most of the time, you'll hear people talk about this, the one-third rule, all right? And they'll use that in politics as well. They'll say, oh, well, one-third, you know, is for this guy, one-third's for this guy, and you have to try to get this third. People will usually say that for the American Revolution. They'll say, oh, it's just like in the Re American Revolution, one-third was uh, American patriots, and one-third was for the British, and the third in between, you know, people had to kind of, um, uh, try to win on their side. That's really not accurate. Even though you hear it all of the time, serious historians will, will give you more of this, this figure here. Okay? Um, so at first glance, like I said, it seemed like it had been an easy war for the British. However, uh, the Americans... Let me just put American advantages. The Americans had... Um, several advantages as well. First, Americans had superior leadership. The kind of men that they don't make anymore. Um, you know, like I, I said in previous lectures, you know, maybe I mean, I, I'm one of them, of course, you know, but overall, um, you don't find too many men like that anymore. Anyway, okay, I'm just messing around. All right, so uh, the first American advantage was superior military leadership. American uh, commander, commanders did lack experience, all right? They weren't as, uh, as formal uh, as the British, which was actually probably a positive thing in America. Um... But in a way, the fact that they like they lacked experience uh, kind of proved to be a great asset. Okay, unlike British generals, American generals did not consider themselves bound by the European rules of warfare. Now, what you did, what you found in Europe, uh, was that people would go to a field. When I say people, I'm talking about armies, and. They would line up like this. And they'd fight each other. Just like that. This is called linear tactics. And they would make sure they, there were rules. Uh, you didn't kill officers, for example. A lot of the 
officers were aristocrats and were probably related to each other. Okay, even though they were, you know, different, you know, this might be Prussia, for example, and this may be England, and, and the officers um, may have actually been sort of distant relatives, okay? Um, they wouldn't fight in the wintertime, okay? Uh, the, you know, and, and so they would fight, and whoever held the field at the end of the day kind of outmaneuvered each other, outdisciplined each other, outshot each other, won, okay? It's very different than what we'd find uh, that the Americans sometimes used, which was guerrilla tactics. Okay. The British felt like they were fighting uncivilized people, people who refused to obey the European rule books. And attacking in the winter, for example, and shooting from behind walls and trees, again, guerrilla tactics. Uh, was for you know according to the British uncivilized, but you know Americans were like so, what you can be civilized and then you'll be dead. <clears throat> the second or another American advantage, and maybe p perhaps the most important, uh, was that Americans had superior allies. Um, Great Britain only had Portugal and Hanover, which was in, at that time, in uh, Prussia. All right. The Americans had on their side the French, which didn't really come to their aid until later, but that was a huge reason for their victory. Another American advantage was that it was higher stakes. If the Americans, or if the British lost, they just went home. If the Americans lost, all right, they felt that you know, the political leadership would all uh, be hanged for treason and um, they would be under, you know, cons you know under British rule forever. Uh, British soldiers would gain little from crushing the rebellion and would lose little for failing to do so. But American soldiers, who generally owned their own forms, all right, they were fighting for tangibles. You know, in other words, behind me is my family, you know, my home, everything. And so obviously you're going to fight harder. Another um, big advantage that the Americans had was that they did not have to deal with the logistical problems that British, that Great Britain did. When you talk about logistics, you're talking about, you know, okay, here's Great Britain. We got to send our troops to America. Once they're in America, we have to make sure that they're fed. That we have to make sure that they're supplied. All of that. Okay, so Americans didn't have to worry about that as much. They weren't three thousand miles from their home. The sixth American advantage was the lack of a central city. There was no central city in France, for example. What's the you know what's the city? If you take this city, you pretty much take France. Paris, all right, if you go to England, what's the central city? May, you know, if you take it, you can pretty much control the country. London, all right. What was that with America? They didn't have one. There was no Washington, D.C. at that time. Washington, D.C. is kind of a made-up city. Um, you know, if you took New York, well, you know, so what? All right, it, it wasn't going, it wasn't going to make... Uh, America, you know, there was America was not centralized, and so there was no place that you can like say, okay, if we take this city, we have won. At one time or another, the British captured every American, uh, every major American city, uh, even the capital, which was Philadelphia at that time, but to no avail. Um, so you could say the beast they were trying to slay was a many-headed uh, beast. And the last goal, or I'm sorry, advantage was that Americans had limited goals. And what I mean by that is that the, 
the Americans only had to not lose. They didn't have to, you know, they didn't have to take over any land and occupy land or whatever. They just had to not lose. And when you, you just don't, you know, when you're just in a position where you don't have to, you know, it's just like we just have to keep fighting. <coughs> That's a great <coughs> advantage. Okay. All right. So we'll end there and um, we'll talk to you in the next lecture.